So I was browsing the cheap games on Steam, and I came across the aforementioned game. So I looked at the reviews, and they seemed to consist of either it's good or bad, and a mixed rating. So I was a bit cautious before purchasing, but for only just over a quid, it looked like not complete trash. And I'm glad to report it's not. I think it's rather good, actually. Here's why. Before we get into the game, there is the options menu. One thing I'd recommend you do is to turn VSync off. Because then, for some reason, without doing this, the game would lock to 30fps for me. But by doing this and setting VSync back on, it ran at 75fps, my monitor's refresh rate. Everything else is your standard PC stuff. First is the main menu, very simple. I haven't played the multiplayer so I ain't gonna comment on that. Everything else is your basic menu stuff. But before I get into the gameplay, I want to take a second to appreciate the menu design here. It's very clean and basic, while also fitting in with the gritty dirt aesthetic as well as pictures of these bikers, none of which I know the name of. From what I can tell, the two options here basically means either single race or a few races, whilst the other are the collection of 18 races. As I was recording the footage, I found you can choose more races if you'd like, but still less than the latter. I prefer to play championship mode, but Grand Prix is fun as well. In Grand Prix mode, we get the choice of our racer, track, and other options. Basically difficulty and realism toggles. In the championship mode, you get the same options, except you get to choose 18 tracks to play, and that's basically it. Once we're in game, you'll notice the graphics, at least I assume so, and how relatively good the game looks at such a low price point. I was quite surprised at first, the only issue being that the rails and thin lines look really aliased, even with anti-aliasing on maximum. Now on to gameplay. The bike feels fairly realistic with the assists on, I'm nowhere near good enough to play without them. I even use rewinds, which is something I basically never use in other racing games. I do want to mention here, there seems to be no penalty for having all the assists on at once, besides only being able to rewind once every 20 seconds or so, although that doesn't seem like much of a penalty to me. At first I found the bike to be somewhat unpredictable when driving round corners, especially because of how sensitive the bike can be at lower speeds over ramps. But over time I learned to anticipate the corners and hence it became easier to keep on the track. Still, it's quite easy to lose control of the bike, even with all the assists on. The amount of times I've ragdolled from somehow falling off the bike or clipping another biker is far more than I'd like to admit. The race length seems to be quite long, with most races lasting between 4-6 to six minutes with 3 laps, whereas many games I've played last 3-4 to four minutes per race, also with 3 laps. Now let's look at some of the maps. There are many maps from a lot of countries. UK, France, Germany, Australia, US, etc. And they range from large straights with wide corners to steep hills and literal hairpin turns. I've played through about 10 now, and so far I like the variety of lighting, day and night settings, size, environments, etc. And they all feel unique enough to keep me engaged. Just before I wrap up this video, I did actually win a championship, funnily enough. But there isn't anything to incentivize you to win other than bragging rights I guess, because it sent me straight back to the main menu afterwards. And this is probably why the game is so cheap, because the core mechanics of the game are here, which is the actual racing, but there is no career mode at all, just either a couple of races or the 18 race championship mode. Uh, basically it's fun for a few hours and the tracks are varied enough to keep most people in longer than they might expect. But don't expect this to be the next Minecraft in terms of longevity. So that's the video. If you can find this game for £3 or $4, then I'd recommend picking it up. Any more, and I, I don't think it's worth it in my opinion. Anyway, thanks for viewing my content, and go buy someone a video game. They could probably do with it. See ya.